I'm Mark Skinner. I am the superintendent for the excavating side of uh, Alliance Water. I'm Kane Kelly, the supervisor over the excavating crew of Alliance Water. Well, the process is uh, we would get a call in uh, alerting us that we have a break or water running down the street and we would show up, send a person out there to find out uh, the severity of the break and how much water's uh, going down the street. A lot of times it's impacted if it's a big break. The uh, water treatment plant will start noticing a drop in water pressure. When that occurs, we know that there's a, a larger main involved. We get crews on site, try to figure out where we need to isolate this, what's the impact going to be, and how many people are impacted by this break. Um, if it's a large main, we need to get it probably shut down as quickly as we can. Once it's isolated, then we go in and uh, determine that we can dig it up and make what kind of repairs it is we have to make. Uh, but it's, if it's a large main, all hands are on deck. We, we call in everybody that we can to uh, hand out notices, to from that to closing valves, uh, opening hydrants to flush the mains. Uh, once the mains are repaired, we go back and isolate that area, sample it, till samples all come back. We collect several samples and they all have to come back clean before we lift a boil water advisory if it's to that severe, so. That had to happen on Big Ben uh, across from Burling. By the time it got done, we got the valves shut down enough to try to get the plant back online. So, I mean, it affected the whole town of Cape because the plant ran out of water. So, I think I shut down 15 valves and I che rechecked them probably three to four times to make sure they were shut. They was having a hard time getting the, the hole dry, dry enough to get in the work. And then the main being seven feet deep, so we had to put trench boxes in. So, it, it was a little bit more than just a small break. I think there were six of us that stayed 24 hours and then we were relieved by another crew to keep working while we went home and got a little rest before we come back. And I did come back, uh, I guess, six o'clock that night or five o'clock to help get the valves and everything turned back on to get the town back in water, everything working right. So the first stretch was 24 hours straight and then I was back in for eight. I was probably around 96 to 100 hours that week to get everything back up, tested, trying to help everything get back to normal. So it was a long week. Well, this is one of the valve wrenches that we had used. Now this, I didn't do this by myself. There was a couple of us, a couple of guys helping me turn. And we thought we were turning the valve, but as you can tell, we were turning the wrench, not the valve. So it kind of gave way after we was turned on it quite a few times. Those are high max fittings. There was a piece of the main that had to be cut out. So they're used on each end as a dresser sleeve. So you cut a piece of main out, put one on each end and tighten them back up. Well, behind the scenes, there's an army of people that take place. You have people that are collecting samples and people that are putting notices out. People are doing maps. People are trying to close valves. Also, there are people trying to close down the streets and and make that secure so we can do our job safely. And after hours, you have to put up light stands and work throughout the night. And uh, water plant personnel were working, trying to get the water plant secured and ready to go for when the break was repaired. Um, it just takes a, an army of people for a long time to get this back up and running. 